Hello. So today I'm going to talk all about um, healing trauma. So this process that I'm going to talk about, I started doing about, um, I want to say like 12 years ago or so, like 10, 12 years ago. And I do not remember who I got it from. Part of it has been a download that's been adapted as information came over the years. But the initial one, I didn't make it up. I got it from somewhere, but I'm sorry, I don't remember. So the thing is, is that sometimes we have trauma or wounds. I'm going to actually use that word more that we don't know where they came from. We don't always know or remember a, if we were very young. So we're kind of going by what people tell us, or we intuitively uh, feel happened, or it's from a past life. And then we really don't know exactly, right? But we've been carrying it over and over again. So one past life trauma that I do know of for myself is my eyesight. And if you know me at all, I have been struggling with some, um, I've had a couple of cornea transplants and I'm waiting for another one. And I just, ha I have a degenerative disease in my eyes and um, it has some weird uh, uniqueness to it <laughs> that the doctors aren't quite sure about. But anyways, so where I do, I did do a past life regression and had in another lifetime where I had been blinded. So this isn't the first time I've had this issue with my eyes. And I know that it has, um, and I feel or in intuitively know that this has been more than two lifetimes. So I could use that. Or I could use the first time I used this process, I actually was trying to get over a breakup and it was taking me a really long time. And so I used this process. That's how it first came to me was to use this process to get over, to move on and, and heal from this. So the thing is, is that what you do is much like in today's world, we do not let a surgeon operate on their family member because they are emotionally involved and the emotions could have a die, you know, a, an effect on the outcome, or they could be overthinking. They could, you know, it's just not good practice. <laughs> Let's say that. So the th same thing applies for you. We can heal trauma or old wounds, but it's not best for us to do the healing. We want to take them to somewhere to do the healing for somebody else. Let the professionals take care of it. So here's the process. What you do is you either know a situation that you're currently living in. So if I was to take my eyes, then I could use this lifetime because healing in this lifetime will heal all the lifetimes. Healing, um, perhaps it is something that you just intuitively know, like I just Maybe it's a, a money wound, or maybe it's around partnership or relationship. Maybe it's um, something to do with um, feeling abandoned or a fear about something, you know. So say it was a fear of heights and you wanted to get over this. You can, the first thing you do is imagine what the trauma or wound would look like on a bot physical body. So even... If it was a fear of heights, perhaps the fear would manifest on a body. You could see it because you need to see it in a physical form, not just in a, in a thought or feeling, but in a physical form. So perhaps, um, I don't know why I picked fear heights, but anyways, fear of heights would manifest as, um, oh, like my hands are tied behind my back. Because you know, when you fall, you instinctively put your hands out first. Oh, that's a good one, actually. So, so perhaps, perhaps, I'm, and you're going to do this for yourself. Perhaps if I was scared of heights, I would feel like my hands were tied behind my back and I had no control over that. Right. So there's the physical manifestation of it. So my hands are glued together, or tied behind my back. Now, you also intuitively know or think back to, how old was I? So I know what the person looks like, what me looks like as I'm taking this person to heal. So maybe I'm nine. I'm nine. My hands are, are, are stuck behind my back and I feel, um, and I'm scared of heights. So me, the 57 year old, 
am going to go into a meditation or a quiet moment and just imagine that I am going to meet my nine-year-old self who has her hands tied behind her back and she's at the edge of a cliff. Now, where would I take this person, this nine-year-old, to recover from this wound, this trauma, this fear? Oh, that's good. Perhaps I would take her to um I'm just I'm just intuitively doing this. <laughs> so I perhaps I would take her to um and you don't want to take her to your place. You want to take her somewhere else. So perhaps I would take her to um it's funny because I see like the Grand Canyon. So perhaps I would take her to a ranger station. Oh, I like that. That's good. Okay, we're going on here. So I'm going to take her to a ranger station because I am not going to do the healing or the fixing. I'm going to let the professionals do it. So I would take her to a ranger station where they had a knife or scissors that they could undo the rope and she could re have a warm blanket and she could be comforted like this. Um, when I did it, I the first time I did it for the breakup, I was in my uh, 30s when I had the breakup. I was in my 40s when I did the process and I took my younger self in her 30s to the hospital because the breakup made me feel like I got gutted like a fish. Not a pretty picture. So I immediately called 911 and we went to the hospital. Now, you're going to let the professionals do their work. Whatever shows up, where to take them is perfect. Perhaps it's the doctor, perhaps it's a shaman, perhaps it's a monastery, perhaps it's the ranger station, perhaps it's who, you know, an ear, nose and throat specialist. I don't know. Whatever the physical wounds look like, that's what that's where you're going to take them to get healed. Whatever feels appropriate. When you drop them, you're going to drop them off. You're not going to hang around. Just like if somebody has surgery in the hospital, we get to visit, but we don't get to stay too long. So you're going to drop them off. And then the next day, so day two, that's day one of the process. Day two of the process, you're going to wake up the next day and at some point you're going to go visit them. So you're going to just take five minutes of quiet time. <sighs> go back there in your, in your mind, in your imagination, intuitively to where you left them. So for me, with the hospital, I went back the next day and she, the 30 year old self had stitches and bandages and there were nurses looking after her. In this moment, I can go back and see my nine year old self and she's drinking hot chocolate and she feels so much better now. And her shoulders are getting, you know, loosening up because they've been tied behind her back for a long time. And the Rangers are um, nearby and, and watching after her. Day three, you do the same thing. So you just keep going back until the earlier you has been healed. So for the hospital, at, when I first did the process, it took me about six or seven days. And finally, I just went there and the 30-year-old me was sitting by the window having lunch, no problem. She was healed. This it, There was a little bit of a scar, but it was going to fade and you know, and I could take her home. So whenever, now I'm imagining that my nine-year-old self, it only takes maybe three days and she's all better. Um, so it depends on how long maybe the wound has been there or how deep the trauma was or whatever. So you take the younger version of you to somewhere appropriate to be healed. You let the professionals look after them. And you come back until they're healed. Then you can take them at the very end. You can do two things. One, you can ask the angels to come and get them, which may be appropriate for certain times, especially if it was a very traumatic, traumatic experience. And you don't want to go back. You, your adult self, adult self don't want to imagine going back to your childhood home or um, wherever this occurred. You can ask the angels to come and get them and they will take them back to their correct lifetime and they will feel much better. Or you can take them back yourself. 
you can get it. It was funny because when I did this one um, where I was with my 30 year old self, um, I actually hailed a taxi. <laughs> I was like, okay, we, we, in my imagination, we went out of the hospital and I hailed a taxi and off she went. <laughs> and there we go. Um, so the, the way to do it for past lives is to just intuitively know you don't have to do some big past life regression. Yeah. It could be cool to do it for sure. Absolutely. If you want to, but just ask your angels and guides. Okay. So I feel like this has, so perhaps for me, it would be my eyes. So I might go into uh, automatic writing or um, just a quiet time and ask my angels and guides, okay, guys, I know that this is not the first lifetime I've dealt with my eyes or blindness. So, you know, can you give me another instance or can you bring me, oh, I like that better, the the me in another lifetime where this may be appropriate for healing or the best. Oh, I like that. The best life for me to heal this through and suddenly will pop into your head. Oh, 22 year old and car accident, or actually what occurred to me earlier when I was asking this was, um, four and, and, uh, fire. So uh, at some point, my four-year-old, uh, suffered in a fire and with burns and went blind. So, you know, for, so immediately when that comes up, I'm like, okay, great. Take her to a, a burn unit. <laughs> like, let's, you know, let's get this fixed. So just intuitively ask what is, who is the me that is best to heal this through all lifetimes? Oh, I like that. Who is the best me version of me to heal through all lifetimes. So don't take on the healing yourself. Take, take the version of you to the, to the appropriate professionals. Let them do it. It could even be that you're taking them to a, um, a room in heaven and let the angels heal them. Whatever shows up for you, whatever feels right for you. And then watch the progression as they heal. Continue to come back, encourage them, love them, but you do not do the healing. Just like a surgeon doesn't operate on their family. I love this. Okay, so that's the process. Try it out and let me know what happens. Thanks. Bye.